Welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today, I am going to show you guys, 3 easy tricks to get your Blender files rendered online in no time, without any cost. So, let's get started. So before starting the rendering, I will show you how you have to configure your Blend file for getting rendered online. This step is very important to avoid getting errors while rendering. So, make sure to watch the complete video without skipping. So, first, go to the Render Properties panel and select the render engine you want your project to be rendered. Enable denoising if you need it. But, make sure to set the denoising method to NLM, because some online rendering methods don't support optics denoising. Next, in the Output Properties panel, select the resolution of the output frames as well as the frame range to be rendered. Then, select the output file format in the color model. Black and white, RGB, or RGBA. Then go to File. External Data, and select Pack All into Blend which will pack all texture files into your Blend file. If this was a success, you will see a confirmation message at the bottom of the screen. So, now, your Blender scene is ready to be rendered. Method 1, Sheep Pit Render Farm. If you are rendering a large number of frames, this would be your best option. Sheep Pit is a distributed render farm, which means that instead of getting your frames rendered by a high-end machine owned by the farm, the rendering is done by the machines of its users. Rendering in Sheep Hit Render Farm is done based on a point system calculated according to the number of frames you render, which means that it doesn't cost you a single cent. Your projects can be rendered in both Eevee and Cycles render engines. You can see that this farm has rendered over 190 million frames so far. So to get started, go to SheepHitRenderFarm.com and create a new account. Then, on your profile page you can check how many frames you have rendered and the number of points you have gained. The point system in the Sheep Hit Render Farm is calculated on the basis of the number of hours your machine renders in reference to the reference machine used by the Sheep Hit Render Farm. For each minute you render, you gain 37.5 points while for each minute of render time you order you lose 9.6 points. This means that you can order 4 times the render time you spare. And if you render your own frames you get 30% of the adding points. To submit your project, you need to have rendered at least 10 frames. For that, you have to download the Sheep Hit client. To download the client, go to Get Started and click on the logo of your operating system. In my case, I am gonna download the Windows version of the client. You won't see this Add Your Project section on the Get Started page until you finish rendering 10 frames. After downloading, launch the client by double-clicking on the Download a DXE file. If you get this pop-up window, select Run, and the Auto Extractor will extract the client and it will get launched. Enter the necessary details such as your username, password, the amount of memory you want to allocate, and the priority given to the client. Higher the amount of power you give, the higher the number of points you can gain. After filling in the information, click on Start to start rendering frames. Once you have finished rendering at least 10 frames, you can submit your own project. For that, go to the Get Started page and scroll down to the Add Your Project section. Click on Choose File and select the Blend file to be rendered. Then click on send this file. Then wait for your file to get uploaded. On the right side, you can see the place your project will be on the waiting list. Make sure to read the instruction given below that. In the next step, you have to configure your project. You have to select the Blender version you use to make this scene and select the compute method you want your frames to be rendered. NVIDIA, AMD, or the CPU compute method. If you want your project to be outputted as an MP4 video, tick the Generate MP4 Video checkbox, or else it will be outputted as an archive of images. Select whether you need a single frame or an animation and select the range of the frames you need to render if it's an animation. If you have a highly complex scene or your project is to be rendered in very high resolution, select the Split to Tiles option. Then, click on Add this Blend button. Then you can track the progress of your rendering on the Scene Management page. You can also track the progress on the projects page. Also, check the place of your project on the waiting list to be rendered on the projects page. My project is in the first place as I have rendered a higher number of frames. On the scene management page, you can see which users rendered or are rendering your frames. The frames already rendered are shown in blue while the currently processing frames are shown in yellow and the waiting frames are denoted in white. After your frames are rendered, they will be automatically archived and will be available for download. Once it's ready to be downloaded, you will see a green download button. Click on the button to download the zip file of frames and you can use an editing software to convert it into a video file if you want. If the frames are still processing, you will see a blue gear icon. Refresh the page after a while until you see the green download button. 
Method 2, Google Collaboratory. This method is most suitable for rendering projects with a fewer number of frames. Download the render script with the link in the description. Then upload the script along with the Blender file to the Google Drive by clicking New, Upload File. Then wait for it to get uploaded and follow this next step to connect your drive to Google Collaboratory. Click on the plus sign on the right side of your screen and search for Collaboratory. Click on the first search result and select Install to install Google Collaboratory to your drive. In my case, I already have installed Google Collaboratory. Once you have installed the app, refresh the page to update the changes you made. Then double-click on the script to open it with Google Collab. Click on the icon next to Connect button and select View Resources. In the panel that opens up select Change Runtime Type. Then from the drop-down menu in the window which pops up, select GPU and select Save which allows you to connect to a GPU service by Google Collaboratory. Then close the Resources panel and click on the Play icon in the first cell of the notebook to run the cell. It would take some time to connect you to a session. Once you are connected to a session, it will start executing automatically. The first cell will show you the details of the session you are connected to. It is seen that this session has been connected to a Tesla K80 model. In the second cell, select the Blender version you use to create this Blend file and run the cell to download the specific Blender version from the repository. Then wait until the cell finishes executing which would take a few moments. Then run the next cell to connect your Google Drive with the notebook. Right click on the link and select open in new tab to open the link in a new tab to connect your Google Drive. Then sign in with the Google account in which your blend file is stored and copy the authentication code on the screen and paste it on the box in the cell of the Colab notebook and press enter. Then run the next cell to mount your Google Drive to the notebook. After that, edit the red colored text with the location and name of your blend file and the name of the output file as you require. If you want to render a single frame, set the value to the frame of your scene you want to render and execute the first cell. If you want to render an animation set the starting frame and the ending frame values and execute the second cell. After executing wait for your frames to get rendered. After getting rendered, the frames will be downloaded to your Google Drive at the specific location you set in the cell. If you rendered an animation output images will be named with the name of your project followed by the frame number. For example, if your project name is Test Render, the frames will be named Test Render 001, Test Render 002, and likewise. Method 3, Crowd Render. If you have some spare computers at your house, Crowd Render can help you to use them for Blender rendering purposes. Crowd Render is a Blender add-on that is used to connect local machines to boost the rendering process of Blender projects. Crowd Render supports both EV and Cycles render engines. Crowd Render is a free and open source add-on to be used with Blender. You can download it for free by visiting their official website, crowdrender.com. To download the add-on, first, you have to create an account by clicking on Download and then on Sign Up at the bottom of the page. After creating an account you will be taken to the download page, where you can download the latest version of the add-on. Once the zip file is downloaded you can install the add-on to Blender by following the next steps. Open Blender and go to Edit, Preferences and in the pop-up window that appears, go to Add-ons and click on Install. Then select the zip file you just downloaded and click on Install Add-on. Then search for Crowd Render in the search bar and make sure that it's activated. Now, you can close the pop-up window and then go to Render Properties. And scroll down until you find Crowd Render and click on Start. Then select the render engine you want your scene to be rendered. Under Render Nodes, click the plus sign and click on Connect and fill in the necessary details about the device which is connected to the same network as this computer. Then click on OK and now you are ready to render your Blender scene. If you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and don't forget to press that subscribe button to get more awesome videos like this. And if you faced any issues following this tutorial, make sure to comment down below so I can help you out with it. So. Thank you for watching and see you soon.